And here we go with our May 19th monthly mid-month community call. I'm Jennifer Britton, one part of the Remote Pathways podcast. And Michelle, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Easing into the day with a good cup of coffee and some good remote friends here today. So glad to be here. Yeah. Glad for our topic too. We got a great topic today. We got a great topic, trust and connection. And I think as we think about what this spring 2020 has brought for not just thousands of teams, but really billions of people all over the world, how are we becoming more adept and proficient at building trust and connection with people we may never meet physically, but we need to rely on. And so that is the topic of today. And Michelle, this is our topic of our, our most recent or the next uh, podcast episode. So when is this releasing? This one is already. Yeah, surprise. It, it popped in your inbox yesterday morning. If you have an opportunity to listen, it's short. It's, it's under 20 minutes, this conversation it is, but it's full of those key essentials to building uh, trust, safety, and connection in the remote space. So great conversation to share with your teams too and spark ideas. So we really hope that, you know, podcasts have become a part of your daily routine. We know some of you on the call are exercising as you go today. So thanks for doing double duty. We are going to play some bingo. So one of my favorite activities for the last 30 years, when I brought groups together physically, is to find out a little bit more about each other. And so we brought this to the remote pathways, remote space, and we want to play some bingo with you this morning. What we'd like to invite you to do is use this fantastic tool here on Zoom, which is known as annotation. And if you're not familiar with where annotation is, you'll find it most likely at the top of your screen. You probably will see you're viewing Jennifer Britton's screen, and then you might see beside it a little button that says either view options or annotate. If you just see view options, we'll get you to click the button view options, and down will come another button, and there will probably be annotate. Once you hit annotate, click on that, you're gonna get a whole line of new tools available to you. And we would like you to share with us two things that are unique about you. We're not gonna play in the true bingo fashion. We're really gonna just do more of a, let's get to know you, but grab what is called the stamp function. Um, once you get into annotate, you're gonna see there's a button that says stamp. And that's gonna give you the option to have a heart, to have a star, to have maybe a check mark. We'd love for you, and someone's found the heart, which is great. Oh, we'd sorry, that was me. <laughs> Michelle's found the heart. Um, we'd love for you to share like something about yourself. Maybe you love podcasts. Maybe you're like me, you go to bed early because you rise at the crack of dawn. Or maybe like my podcast host, you like lima beans. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's take a few minutes just to like share something about you and tell us what like what makes you unique. We've got a lot of people on the on the call who have a pet and you might want to share with us what kind of pet do you have? Do you have a pet llama? Do you have guinea pigs like we have? We have Zippy and Amber in my household. What do you what do you do? What do you do? We have people who love to read. All right. What else? Better put myself on here too. We should have put like, do you love conference calls, right, Michelle? Yeah, right. <laughs> I wonder how many people would say yes, right? Maybe. I think maybe a few more a few months ago. <laughs> God damn. Who has Anyone been on the radio? That's fun. Anyone yes. experience Zoom fatigue? Am I the only person who has said that? So yeah. Jennifer Brody shares, she's got two dogs, not as exotic as llamas. I don't know why I'm thinking of llamas this morning. I don't know, but I feel like maybe I need to travel, perhaps, metaphorically. Okay, so we're going to give you another 20 seconds. If there's something you'd like to share with us about who you are and what you do, several enjoy travel. Going to bed early, all right, that's good. Loves podcasts. If you like traveling, like share with us in chat, where do, you, where, where do you want to travel to next? We've all had a chance to think about where we might want to go next when things open up. Where do you want to go? 
I'm intrigued, Michelle. You've got some like uh, colleagues there that like lima beans as well. <laughs> In good company. Yeah. <laughs> I have to look up some recipes for, for uh, lima beans. Yeah. Okay. So who liked that? Just let's get a like show of hands. If you like that, give us a green check mark. We want people going to the beach, Alaska, another beach. I want to go to the cottage. I can't wait to go to the cottage again sometime soon. Oh, Jennifer said uh, lima beans are nature's comfort food. <laughs> there we go okay well thank you very much as always we like to bring just a quick something we're going to post this let's play bingo with you on our our facebook page if anyone would like to use it with attribution by all means please do we of course didn't use the usual like how to use it but i think you got an idea that it's just a fun way to start cultivating a little bit of trust and connection so I'm going to just stop my share because that's always the easiest way to come out of that little screen. And just a reminder, like we are still in Q2. We have another month, really five weeks to go. And this quarter's theme is all about experimentation. If you have a copy of my 2019 book, Plan Do Track, Workbook and Planner, which of course is geared for virtual and remote professionals, Really, there are five, six different ways, six different business philosophies that the whole book is built around. Four of them you see here. So last quarter, we looked at focus. This quarter, it's all about experimentation. And I really did not plan this 18 months ago when I was writing the book. But really, think about how you've experimented throughout the last few months. Mm -hmm. I think as many people have had to move over to the remote space to work, it's been about piloting things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And with that, really thinking through what's going to work best. And it may be continued pivots. That, I think, is probably part of the, work, uh, the workspace for many more months to come. Come July, we're going to shift gears a little bit into the third of six business philosophy areas, which is going to be about motivation, getting you to think about what really are your drivers? What are those things that help you do your best work? And certainly, as we do it remotely, what really are the things that like motivate us? What are the things that perhaps tap our energy? And then how do we really collaborate, build teams, build networks to uh, leverage the skills and talents that maybe aren't quite motivational for us, but that we need to keep business running. Q4, we're gonna get into reflection. And of course, that's gonna be a great part of the year, um, but we'll also be continuing to cultivate a couple of the other two other philosophies that are embedded in all that we do at Plan Do Track. And of course, there's a strong touch point here at Remote Pathways. But Plan Do Track and Coaching Business Builder were really built out of this mindset of daily steps plus consistent action equals momentum. And that's been key for success for at least the teams that I've worked with in the last three decades in the remote space. And I think everyone has seen that. It's, uh, you know, we just, we just got to keep moving. Most of the time, we don't know where things are going to go to next, but it's very easy in this space to really get into the analysis paralysis. And with that, um, I'll just mention the sixth philosophy, because people are like, that's five, what about the sixth? And the sixth one is reflective pause and celebration, which of course, as we like to do every time we meet with you, let's still celebrate some of the things you've been doing. So with that, Last call, we know many of you loved the conflict is for the birds. Michelle, I know you got a lot of energy out of that call. What did you like about our, our last conversation with Gail? I, I really loved the feedback and I loved um, hearing all the different birds that people connected with. Um, but as always, I love listening to our listeners and I did hear how impactful it was, right? And you did too of like, how could a small activity you know, just that small amount of time frame brings such awareness, not only for the individual, but for others as well. So just appreciating that. Yeah. And we really do hope that you're getting some great value, whether it's focus or new insights. If you haven't viewed the conflict is for the birds, it was the beginning of May remote pathways community call for 2020. Take a look back and let us know what is the bird that you really find yourself aligned with as it relates to conflict. I think conflict along with trust and connection, these are really critical issues at this phase of sort of like 
beyond the early days of remote work. And again, Michelle and I didn't plan this. When we really started mapping this out about six months ago, we just figured, you know, once people get up to speed and once they really get working in the remote space, these two areas, trust and connection, or a lack of trust and a lack of connection, along with skills or uncertainty around how to navigate conflict, really become important levers to look at and to adjust so that you can keep running and do your best work mm -hmm. in the remote space. So that's our segue into trust and connection. We're not gonna you know, really uh, ask you to share everything, but uh, for yourself, I'd really like you to think about your most important partnerships right now. And on a scale of one to 10, where is your level of trust with that person or those people? And I just wanna give you 20 seconds to jot down, maybe beside that number, another very specific um, think or thought around what else is important for you right now around trust and connection. So just take a moment, what's your one to 10 and what, what is the status of trust and connection in with your partners right now? And Michelle, I'm going to turn to you first. Like, you don't have to share the numbers, but like, even me asking that question, trust and connection, like, what comes up for you as a, as a remote professional right now about this topic? Yes, I'm 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 higher on the chart. I'm up in the nine ten area because those key things are in place. I feel, um, as far as my experience with others, so the question that I stretched with was, you know having the conversations with the people that I work with to ensure that they feel the same way. It's reciprocal and maybe what needs to be in place for them to be on that high number. So that's where my. Yeah. And I think that it's that reciprocity, right? Um, a couple of years ago, and I'm just going to share one more thing and then we're going to open it up for discussion. Um, this topic of trust, trust building and trust destroying has been a, such an integral part of my work as a team coach, over the years as a team leader. I'm sure it is something that most of you on the call or listening to the call finds that it is really just such a critical thing. And so a few years ago, I had a, a cartoonist, an illustrator design this, what I call the duality of trust. And if you're interested in reading this, you can head on over to the team's 365 blog, which I host over at my main site, potentialsrealized.com. But it's really like this two-faced individual. You know, We have things that we do that build trust, walking our talk, having regular open communication and i think we'd all agree in a remote space and certainly at times of crisis or uncertainty we need to communicate 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 and be consistent with that communication back to my seven c's of remote enablement if you haven't downloaded the remote working white paper communication and consistency is so critical at any time with remote work especially at this time and you know, if we don't do one of these things, whether it is the communication or the recognition or follow through, uh, making sure that we're like demonstrating trust in others or setting clear expectations, we can easily revert to that other side of the trust destroyer. And um, Michelle and I were having a conversation earlier this week and I was sharing with her like one of my favorite books, one that I've seen my clients really have resonated with is a book by Stephen Covey Jr. called uh, Speed of Trust. And his work has been over the last 15 years all about what helps organizations build these trusting cultures. So if you've never taken a look at Speed of Trust, it's also a really great book because he really gets into the behaviors behind trust. And again, in the remote space, we build trust by what we, what we show, by what we demonstrate. So it's these little things that, or things that we perceive as being little, which might actually get really, really magnified. So Michelle, just over to you for a minute. Like, what are you thinking when you see this trust builders and destroyers? Well, I'm remembering that internal thing um, that as we actually 
do these things to build confidence in others? Like, are we walking the talk, being regular, you know, doing the regular communication, following through? When we actually execute that, it opens up our hearts to believe, trust others. Because if we're doing it, then we open ourselves to believe that others are doing it as well. So something powerful in taking ownership of this. But yeah, that would be it. I'm taking ownership. And, and, you know, before we open it up, like one other piece that I think is quite unique to us in the remote space is how are we self-managing, right? Everything we choose to show is what we choose to show, right? And in times of crisis, complexity, like there may be a lot of things happening around us, but what is that message that we choose to show? And so as leaders, as business owners, you know, there is also a self-management piece to say, here's a little bit about what you might need to know, but also here's what you really need to know so that we really are very um, clear on, on what it is that we want to communicate. Because if this is my only touch point this week, this month, anything can get really magnified. Mm. So we'd love to bring in your voice, you know, whether it's something you see here on the screen or something that we've already gotten you to think about, what's important for you right now in your work around trust? And if you'd like to share, feel free to just, just uh, put on your video, raise your hand. You can also, you'll see the reactions button. There's the raise hand function that we're, I'm finding a lot of my clients are loving right now. What's important for, for you right now around trust and connection? Oh, this is uh, Pat. And I, I found out that um, I was uh, working with some students and you really have to watch, uh, I, I came across something with, with a LinkedIn um, uh, training that they had talking about intent and impact. Um, you know, you have to really be careful. Uh, your intention may be good, but the impact of your message uh, may not be what you intended. And so you really have to really take the time to really, even though your intention is good, you have to think about what impact it has and who your audience is that you're talking to. Such a great point. And was that one of the LinkedIn learning modules, Pat, that you tapped I, into? Yes, I, I believe it was. Um, I, I was on, a, on an AgLearn, uh, USDA AgLearn, and it, it, it opened up to the uh, LinkedIn learning and I had never been there before. It, it just was a, a new thing I was able to uh, tap into. So um, Such a I great just skimmed it. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and impact and, and intent, right? And very much back to this like self-management and preparation. What is it that we're intending to communicate and what impact will it have? Not just on one person, but if we're working with a team, which is likely a team of any type, it's gonna have an, a different impact on everyone. So to really um, also be so aware of who's who on your team. This goes back to the session we did with Jennifer Grody, who's on the call today, you know, around strengths. What do we know about our team members' strengths and how they perceive the world and what they value? And that's just critical in building trust and connection because if we feel engaged in a conversation, you know, if we feel like we're being listened to and heard, we're gonna step into that. Um, but if, if we're not feeling like we're understood, that's automatically gonna put the walls down. So very interesting. Thanks, Pat, for sharing that. Anyone else in terms of what you're thinking about or what's really relevant in your work right now around trust and connection? Jen G. Yeah, um, this actually, as Pat was talking and you were talking, I was thinking about um, the emotional intelligence component that you you know you've alluded to by talking about self-management and you know and self-awareness it's um i think it's it's difficult to build trust if you don't have um a level of self-awareness and so i think that's really important um, as leaders to um, help our teams to um, develop that to understand you know what is self-awareness what is my level of self-awareness and how can i improve that um yeah yeah Emotional intelligence, critical core skill set that I think will con continue to bring into our future conversations here because I think that's what organizations are really looking at, cultivating across all levels, right? Like what is interesting with remote work, and this is going to be a topic coming up in a few months, that we've already recorded it, but just the need for everyone, everyone on a remote team to be empowered. It doesn't mean that they're a leader, but they do need leadership skills 
They need just as refined collaboration skills, communication skills, conflict management skills, EI, emotional intelligence skills, because leadership is different in the remote space. We have to work through others. So really, you know, one of the quotes that you often hear is like, you know, our, our weakest link is the person with the cult least cultivated skills. So we, mm -hmm. if we really want to run as a team, we need to make sure that everyone, everyone is equipped with the skills and the, the, the tools and also the authority mm -hmm. in order to do the work that they need to be doing. And that's a real shift, right? I think it's something that a lot of leaders right now are sort of coming up against because it's something that has been unspoken by those of us that have led in the remote space for years. It's a, it's a different style and you cannot, you cannot micromanage in the, in the remote space. You have to micromonitor, which is a very different approach. So anyone else on this topic of trust, connection, emotional intelligence? All right, so Michelle, like what do you see as a segue in? Like looking, we've just released this, this uh, latest episode, anything that you wanna invite people to be listening in for in that quick conversation we had, less than 20 minutes, which is a nice thing. Yeah, well, I think that's even our question here today that we want people to take away and carry forward with them is, what are you listening for? Like you're listening with intention. So whether it's the podcast episode, you know, um, elevate one of those essentials that you hear and then take it to your team or just take it into your everyday life. Um, if you don't have a team, it works in your personal life as well. So maybe even in your personal relationships, asking like, what does trust, safety, and connection look like in, in my everyday relationships? Um, and how can we um, see this as a unified approach, right? What are, the, what are the things that matter to all of us? Where's the common ground, right? Absolutely. And many of you know that, especially in recent months, I've been spending a lot of time talking about my 2017 book, Effective Virtual Conversations. Chapter two is all about this triad of trust, safety, and connection. So even if we're not leading a team, but we're leading a webinar, even if we are just doing a, you know, a, a, like a, a talk at people because we can't have people off mute, how are we helping people feel connected through the visuals we're using, through the questioning we're using, and to Michelle's point, the listening, right? Are we priming people for listening? And that, that scientific term means are we setting people up for success with listening? Rather than just saying, hey, welcome. You might want to just put a little sentence or two in around in the next 30 minutes. You know, We've got 200 people on the line and we do want you to feel engaged in this process. So please, first, as we're getting started, I want you to think about and share with us what's important about this topic for you. Because we are living in bubbles, right? And, and very much it's important that we help people see connections across the bubbles because innovation, change, uh, you know, uh, just high performance happens through conversation. And so whether we're just on a, you know, a more interactive call like ours or a big webinar, which is so typical these days, how are we encouraging things like back chat? I was presenting last week to several hundred folks and I actually said at the front of the call, I said, listen, you can be listening to me for the next, you know, hour. However, we have several hundred really talented experts also on the line. I'm not the only expert here. We can't bring you on to the line because we're in a webinar format and everyone is muted. Nothing I had control over. But I said, listen, we want to hear you in the back chat. I want you right now to start sharing some of the tools and practices that you're using. And what do you think happened at the end of that call? People loved it, right? There was like a whole chat log of great resources that had really been um, harvested from or crowdsourced as we would call it today from the the, the community the yeah. community that really they probably came on the call and thought oh no it's another hour i'm going to be like talked at by the quote unquote expert and you know i'm also an expert and so it's like how do we how do we shift that conversation because when people do feel engaged, when they recognize that it is, it is a different conversation, that's where people will thrive. And that's what we need in today's current context. 
So and that's sure. right. Yeah, something's coming up, right? So it, it, one thing that we just learned from Pat and Jennifer, right? What that LinkedIn source and Jennifer was mentioning EI. So I'd love to go around the virtual table for those who, who are able to share their voice. Um, what builds trust for you? Like if you, if you were to name one thing, what is the most important thing for you that builds trust? Please share, let us learn from you. And also we want to give you space at our table to share your voice. What builds trust? What builds trust for you? You can put it in the chat if you're more comfortable. It's funny. I think this, um, this topic, it's, it's good to talk about because I do think it's, um, it's something that's assumed, right? It's like this almost like an invisible thing and you know when you have it and you know when you don't, but it might be more difficult to like define. So I think it's really good that we're talking about this because I think it like within organizations or teams or relationships, it can be something that's very easily assumed, but missed, right? That what's that disappointment is the, the difference between uh, intention and reality or something like that, right? You know, it's like, um, and like Pat was saying, the impact versus intent. So um, I think for me, that consistency piece is, is a big trust builder. That's good. And conversation I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. communication yes let's talking let's about talk it. about it yeah yes. let's put yeah. this on the virtual table and have a conversation i love it yeah thank you jennifer yeah mm -hmm. so for the rest of you yes carry that question with you consider just pause reflect on that today what what builds trust for you what's important to you it matters i really think that follow-through is really important because it really shows that you know it's it's not just something that you're you're doing but when you follow through and you follow up then it it really makes it more important or more meaningful that someone you know cared enough to really reach out that extra to to make sure that uh that connection was made oh it's really good love that yes extra touch right going that extra mile shows value in my yes mm -hmm. i love that anyone else Well, I think we'll just leave it at that and really think about behaviors. How are your actions being perceived? Remember, perception does not always equal reality in the remote work <laughs> world. And that was actually uh, um, in my former, my former team, one of my former teams, the last team I led, which was across 10 countries, probably heard me say this, there were about 30 of us from 26 different nationalities. We got together once a year for about a day and a half. And, I, and one of our key mantras was perception does not always equal reality because we realized very quickly with so much cultural diversity for us as a team, it was really important to be specific, to specify, to give a bit of the backstory, to sort of help uh, people understand maybe how we were prioritizing, not just from a geographic culture level, but because we also worked across industries as well. So there's industry specific culture. So we hope that you'll enjoy this again. I love, Michelle does the graphics and I love the graphic for lucky number 13, establishing trust, connection and safety. We hope that you'll enjoy it. There is a downloadable trust self assessment. And as always, just a note on the downloads, right? We hope that you're actually taking this into your work. We'd love to capture stories and case studies around how these tools are being used. This is something I've run teams that I work with through for years, really taking some of the behaviors or even getting them to identify key behaviors and then scale it, just as we asked you to do today. On a one to 10, where are we? And yes, it can be a challenging conversation, but these are the conversations that need to happen in the remote space, because if we don't do them, if we don't, uh, if we aren't proactive in precipitating them, it's gonna just allow us to run at a certain level. When we can break through some of these like invisible trust and connection and safety issues, as we've heard, we can then move to the next level. And that's what's needed in business today. We need to keep running. And that links in nicely, didn't plan it, but it links in nicely to this week's blog post, Developing a Strong Team Culture. So please make sure to head on over to the Remote Pathways blog. And Michelle picked out this question so michelle our question of the week is 
I'm listening for dot, dot, dot. What are you listening for? What a great question to be thinking about. Tip to remember, Michelle had pulled this from something I wrote as, she, as she's pulled, trust is vital in any relationship. I had written trust and connection are essential for creating a safe space for conversations. And that comes from effective virtual conversations. So we hope that you will be back with us in two weeks. We're back to our 7 a.m. earlier call first Thursday of the month. Our next guest, Michelle, who are we coming, who's coming to join us on, uh, I think it's the 4th of June is the release date of the podcast. The 5th of June is our next community call. We've got Teresa McCloy, another wonderful, um, she has a podcast called the Enneagram in your real life. And she is going to bring Enneagram awareness and what that looks like in the remote space. So it's a fabulous conversation and so glad she'll be joining us on our call. We hope that you'll be back with us. Teresa is a very dynamic lady. I learned a lot about the Enneagram, another great tool. And both of us have different pieces of work on the go. So Michelle, something that you're working on this next month is? Yeah, with Jennifer Grody, who's on our call. We're doing the Finding Calm and Clarity in the Midst of Chaos. So we can bring this to your group or team, or you can sign up to be notified of our next online experience. It's 45 minutes all about dealing with our stress during these times. All right, so if that's for you, I'm continuing on with remote team day. So if you have a remote team, let us know. Let me know if we can support you virtually. Also, continuing to do sort of twice, three times a month virtual facilitation essentials for people who want to create those wow calls. And again, big part of this is how do we build that trust, safety, and connection? As always, we want to thank you for taking time. First Thursday, we'll be back in June with Teresa. And Michelle, final words as we go to wrap up? Yeah, thank you for helping us listen to you because your voice matters to us. So thanks for being present with us today. All right, everyone. Have a great month. Bye. Enjoy what you brought and hope that you do well. Stay healthy. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.